with a yo-ho-ho, it's Ted Latosa. Welcome back to Let's Play Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy. In this video, we are going to continue with the Legend Gate coverage, but first of all, I have commonly been corrected in the comments section when I first said uh, that this bridge area becomes inaccessible once the uh, Orion Express is parked in the middle of the walkway, and that would make sense, like, this bridge probably exists just to continue the runway for the train, and uh, none of the people here actually, like, address the whole Orion Express situation. This is just the same as it always was, but yes, just for clarification, you can still go to the Ocean View Bridge. It just doesn't look like it, because look on the mini-map, think... Surely you wouldn't expect that was a walkway. But nevertheless, that is not what we're here for. We are in fact here to do a Legend Gate, the second one of the series, and for that, I'm going to Nyadi. So I'll see you in a bit. Now, because it's Nyadi, I'll actually show you the way. Thankfully, it's not too difficult. Uh, you just go to Bridge Park on the map and then walk a little bit to the right. You know, I was worried, oh, am I going to have to work out how to do all the switches again? But no, it's on the very first screen. All you need to do is head down here, press the button once to swivel this bridge down south, and then we can access the Legend Gate. But I'm pretty sure there is still part of this map that I haven't fully explored in the main Let's Play. I definitely had at least a couple comments telling me how to get to somewhere that I maybe missed before. So I think at least after the match, I'll have a second scan of Nyadi and see if I can find anything more in this route. But for now, let's uh, focus on the specialty. It's not map solving and button pressing and maze solving. It is Inazuma 11 football matches. And the Saints Way Finals, Ryman versus Dragon Link is going to be happening once again. The final boss of Inazuma 11 Go Light and Shadow. We are Dragon Link, fifth sector's highest ranking team. We are the strongest 11 that you can face. I'll show you guys. Football needs to be regulated. Football controlled by someone isn't real football. We'll get real football back. That we will. I'm sure we did that once upon a time, but we'll do it again. Uh, this time in circumstances that are just a little closer to the canon. You know, again, in the normal game, you can do it at any level you like and completely demolish them. But here we have a three level disadvantage. They're not too high leveled either at level 33. I guess this is to say it's the first game in a full trilogy. Um, but we do have substitutes on the bench. We can use Hugh, we can use Shun, we can use Lucian and JP. You know, most of the players here, even though they're Rhymer regulars, we still haven't recruited them in this game either. They don't just give you them for free in Go Galaxy. You need to actually, like, go and get them if you want them. Even someone like Roma, who was so important, is not with us anymore. Um, Arian is going to be playing centrally. Ricardo de Rigo is not present because, if you remember, <laughs> he was put in hospital for this match so that Arian could be the captain. He's also got Fire Tornado Double Drive in his own moveset. That's important because it was always part of Victor's moveset and is here too. But it goes to show how the movesets of these characters is customised uh, to suit what they were actually doing in this particular match rather than just what their moveset was in Inazuma 11 Go 1. They've given him Drivel Boost Plus as well just to make him a little bit better. But also... Even in the final boss, like, Gabby only has Mystifying Mist, so they actively made Wan Lee and even Aitor a lot better. Like, Gabby is actually somewhat letting the side down, and the fact that Sam is in goal with only Combustion Catch rather than JP, who doesn't have a catching move at all, they really want to nerf your goalkeeping. They don't even give him Fingers of Gaia or anything, so we've got the level disadvantage and we've generally got a bit of a move disadvantage going on as well against, if you recall my little ramble from the uh, XR Fleet rematch, yeah, I do believe this was the hardest final boss in the Inazuma 11 series, and also this isn't like the Resistance National match where spirits were banned because, you know, they were not part of the regulations for that tournament, you know? FFI Vision 2 and that. This is reflective of Go 1's canon, so that means that fighting spirits are available, 
but not armor flying or anything that was introduced afterwards. So I'll still make full use of them as the match goes on. I mean, obviously Quentin Shinkwadea is going to use his at some point. I'll wait for him to pull the trigger, which he's doing now. So that means we're going to be going for Lancelot Lunge. But at least, no, Lancelot wasn't very good in Go 1, it has to be said. They did have to buff it in Chrono Stone, so I assume we get to keep those buffs. Uh, they're both level 3. I still don't think this will be enough to score exactly, but Lancelot Lunge, let's use it, and then that is the last that Victor can use of his spirit. So this is basically using the game and engine of Inazuma 11 Go Galaxy to revisit the gameplay style of Inazuma 11 Go 1 with terrible AI. <laughs> You know, I guess the reverse could have been true. If he could only afford one crown fire, I could have just not gone for the shot and then uh, scored on him afterwards. But fair enough, that's a win for Victor. So let's just go back to the old Go 1 playstyle because I've been critical enough in uh, the Let's Play and just general talking. Oh, wow, that actually <laughs> wasn't enough. Well, that's fine then. Yeah, the gameplay of Go 1 for me was always too stale because fighting spirits were just blatantly better than anything else that was put in your way and as soon as you uh, had one up you know you you couldn't level up the fighting spirits moves you couldn't really use your own moves and well you're actively discouraged from doing so to focus on just using the spirits that were actively better and you were just doing the same kind of charge tackle interactions until you just go for a shot with your fighting spirit at the end so I was never too much of a fan of it but it did at least to say something to its credit, make for a really hard final boss because this is a very defensively minded team and now we have Victor going for another shot but he can't actually afford any sort of move. Uh, Quentin Chigwadea should be able to stop this as long as he goes for Crown Fire. At least Victor's spirit is gone. I could have up to three spirits active by the way, I'm just kind of uh, electing not to because I'd rather showcase the actual move sets that these guys were given. but. Uh, Roma has access to one, Arian has access to one, uh, I'll find, we'll use one on Arian because you know it's the Arch Pegasus that evolved and stuff. Can't use Griffin because, uh, yeah you don't have Ricardo. Ideally you would have JP in goal and then bring out his fighting spirit but I kind of forgot that was a thing after doing this whole go playthrough where I'd uh, not allowed myself. So for now, let's see what access uh, we have in the special tactics. Only offensive ones. You notice Virtuoso, Thunderbolt, Twin Wings and Upsy Daisy are the ones they actually learned in story narratives during Go 1. But because Box Lock was just kind of there by default and not an actual part of the story, we don't have it. So <laughs> can't complain. Wan Lee, at least, is going to do a little better than Gabby. Um... I don't think this guy has any dribbling moves. I'm going to go for Jumbo Sandwich because they, they at least level it up a little bit. Come on, at Gabby, get involved. Uh, Wan Lee went through his whole bullying narrative in Go 1 and now he's changed his mind and decided to flatten these people to the ground like a pancake. Kaiser, are you offside? No. So let's have a little shot. If it needs to be a 1-0 win, then so be it. He doesn't have Ballista Barrage or anything like that, but Sidewinder... It's not something you're going to see me use otherwise, so fine. Let's just wear down Quentin's uh, FSP a little bit more. Because again, it's not like you can armor fly it to heal it back up. Once it's gone, it's gone. So I don't feel like I need to do too much. Um, it's asking me if I want my third spirit. I could bring out Roma's. Should save it for JP, really. But overall, I'm just not bothered. Like, <laughs> maybe we'll use one if we get into a moment of bigger crisis. But... Stuff like White Bishop, you didn't really get the chance to see too much. Let's have a good old spirit duel. When do you, when, how often do you get those? Block versus attack, and the win goes to Arian and his block, but it came at the expense of a lot of his health. They put a lot of thought into that whole idea of how spirit duels work, and then <laughs> armified spirits just defeat them by default, so now it hardly even matters. <laughs> but, you know, it was relevant for one game, and it's relevant for this match, you know? The match that gives you no experience points, no tangible reward other than maybe a friendship token at best. And it's just purely for fun and a testament of skill to say that using a level 30 team you can beat a level 33 team. Who, by the way, is going to use a special tactic which we have no answer for, so... 
Here comes the shot. All right, let's not get cocky because that's the exact moment things start to go wrong. What, not Wan Lee is going to be the MVP. De La Fuente. Did he get brought on from the reserves? But I feel like I've never seen this guy in my life. Who is this? Uh, well, maybe I just was too focused on not giving him the light of the day whenever I've faced Dragon Link. Dragon Link, by the way, that I beat on penalties in my actual let's play. Oh, I didn't see you were there, but <laughs> Adekebe didn't care. Onwards he goes. He does have flying fish. We might as well go for a close range one. Um, beating Dragon Link on penalties is actually kind of one of the optimal ways to do it because penalty shootouts are really easy to win in the Go games because you have the charge function, which is just completely broken and the AI never relies on it. So it makes it really easy for you to score in a penalty shootout it's actually easier to go to penalties and win than it is to get the required amount of goals with just your normal Thor fighting spirits, one of which belongs to a goalkeeper and your otherwise slightly burdened team. Let's get Gabby involved at least, seeing as he's, again, not part of the Earth-11. This is not his story to be involved in. He actually counts as a guest character for the purposes of this match. Uh, don't know why he's not got Mystic Mist, but I guess maybe it's... You know, because it wasn't a story objective to learn it. Obviously, it was for Wall of Atlantis, so he has to have that. Whereas Gabby, they didn't bring particular attention to uh, the mist, deep mist, whatever. Yeah, the, anyway. So they just gave him exactly what he's got. Uh, Roma, you have your special move. Shall we make it 2-0 just so I can be a little more comfortable? Quentin has nothing left in the tank. Again, this is replicating the gameplay of Go 1, but one thing that could have proved a threat is missing, namely uh, Spirit Linking. Uh, he, yeah, if, if Spirit Linking was still in the game, then Quentin Tinkwadea could have pulled out a second Spirit. Not that the AI would ever do that, but it is technically a possibility that was available uh, to Dragon Link if the game allowed it, but it doesn't because this is not Go Light, so instead... The action continues. So, we've talked enough about the match. Again, I just want to ask people in the comments, what do you actually think of Dragon Link? Because they're, they're very much ups and downs. I really appreciate that it's an Inazuma final boss that's actually challenging for pretty much the first time since Zeus. Like, why is it only ever the first game in a trilogy that's got a difficult final boss? Say, same with the difficulty scaling of Inazuma 11 1 altogether. Why was Occult the one that was so hard and then everything else was fine? Uh, yeah, difficulty scaling has never really been Inazuma's thing. I mean, even in Galaxy, people would say that Fertilia is probably the hardest match of the game just because of the gravity. Uh, that's up to you. So, Dragon Link, they did just kind of replace Crotus' team halfway through. I like that they're defensive, but they're also visually quite identical to each other and mainly focused on a goalkeeper who just represents a villain that no one really likes like that's also a kind of a reverse thing i think when it comes to inazuma villains the only one who's really that admired is ray dark the original villain who uh, the series put so much emphasis onto and tropic arrows should score so i'm glad we got that second goal I could sub in JP now at least, but um, yeah, probably will. Let's see. I'll stop it with my combustion catch. Now, of course, he's gone. I'll bring on Hugh and Shun so that there's at least Quentin Shinkwadea's voice in Japanese, something I don't think I've ever heard before in the game. Uh, let's let's get those substitutions going then. Hugh and Shun can. Who would they even replace? Like. Very few of these characters have actually done anything yet. Gabby's going to move. JP can go in goal. Lucian would be someone new to get a goal with, actually. He's got Emperor Penguin 7 as, as a long shot, so that should be quite nice. Eugene has had so much <laughs> airtime in this plot already, so let's go with this. Put them on either side, and I will try to make magic happen with Lucian, because he's got the highest speed stat on our team, we might actually be able to outrun these guys, because they're still only level 30-something. I think in the context of Go 1, they were more like level 45, maybe? Um, but to talk about the villains, Ray Dark has his whole 
three season wide redemption arc and then becomes a coach in Go Galaxy as well. So it's no surprise that the original supervillain is super popular. But after that, um, the alias guys, I mean, obviously people like the alien players themselves, but uh, second guy in his cloak, just he's fine. He comes around to, to be good in the end. It's quite charming. He's just not really discussed outside of that season. Whereas Miles is probably the most forget forgotten in a Zoom 11 villain of all time. No one has anything to say about My Godric Miles or Godric Wiles. That's the one. See, <laughs> confusing him with a cameo character from uh, in a Zoom 11 one. That what does that tell you about the guy? But um, in a Zoom 11 three, Zulan Rice is just detestable, and then. The villain arc of season three is the only real part about the season that's not just directly enjoyable. Season three remains my favourite season, and Zulan Rice is the only part of it that's not that fun to watch. It's not badly done, it's just kind of necessary. Um, no one really likes him. And then Cinque Dea, his influence, I'm talking about the adult one here, but we only meet him late on. Wow, 1087. His influence spans the whole game and made it just a lot moodier of a game than I was hoping for from a soft reboot and in the end he's just got his 14 year old version of himself as his son that just believes solely in his dad and that he loses and after being subbed in at the halfway through the match. So I don't feel anything too strongly about them. Quite nice designs, uh, the Italian naming is pretty cool but they just represent the villains of uh, well, what were probably my least favourite villains of Inazuma 11 until they decided to bring out uh, a certain Orion season. Uh, of course, we've got to end it with Fire Tornado Double Drive. This is the match it was built for. There we go. Arian can do a Fire Tornado, something that will never cease to be confusing to me. Um, but then afterwards, we finally had the trend of the main villains of Inazuma 11 games actually being the opponents in the match, namely Simeon Ape and Ozrock Boldar, and all of a sudden, surprise, surprise, they're some of the most well-loved villains <laughs> since Radar. Like, just being able to be on a pitch clearly just has an advantage on how much they were like. Because I, I kind of thought about this recently. Ozrock is in my top ten favourite characters. I love him. A lot of that is down to Stargazer and his voice acting in general, but it's the match that made me fall in love with that so much. I have to think. What if Ozrock was just a villain who coached Ixar Fleet and didn't play? Would we care about him then? Simeon Ape, I think we would care about regardless of whether he played or not. He's just incredibly entertaining. But Ozrock, he's not exactly got much of a motive going for him. So if he wasn't a player, he might not be a fan favourite. But he is. So he is. And then the Ares villain is even more forgettable than... Godric Wiles is. So there we go, we won to give zero experience points, but three friendship coins. Major. We are Dragon Link. We cannot lose. It's impossible. Impossible! <laughs> Arian has nothing to say about that. Love that the Nyadi music was kicking in as well. Um, I wish I saved a screenshot of the comment that actually told me where to get to the item I missed because. I could just have a read of that now and and go there, but instead, um, I'm I think it's something to do with going behind the shop. So to close off this video, I'm just gonna have a nosy basically and see if I can find any last treasure chests in this area. Otherwise, I will see you another time. Well, we got a photo at least. Let's go, blue water mushrooms. Yeah. Well, we got another photo at least. Let's go, strange seafood. Yeah. And there is the button. I was told it was something to do with the shop. So that is very easily missed right at the beginning. You can go down from here into an underground tunnel and then make your way over here where you can collect a treasure chest containing... Crystal Barrier, the Alpine Junior High goalkeeping move. So, like, nothing really important was missed by skipping this, but there you go. That's where to find it. So, unless I find anything else, that really is the end of the video. That's not even a switch that we need to reset. That's just done. Hidden right there in the shop. I'm going to... For that, I'm going to get... Oh, I can't actually 
buy anything from you. So, never mind. This has been Total Toaster. It's been a fun one. See you in another Legend Gate. 